Hey guys, so when your urologist told you about a vasectomy, did it sound like this? Okay, we're going to do this vasectomy. It's going to be real quick. You're going to find yourself. See you later. It's a pleasure to meet you. If it did, stay tuned. And we're going to give you a sh the spiel that we typically give our patients in slower terms about the vasectomy. Hey guys, Dr. Segel here. So the question is, what is the real lowdown that urologists give their patients before a vasectomy? Okay, and um, at the end, I'm gonna give you my tip that I think is important for urologists to tell patients before a vasectomy to ensure less discomfort afterwards. I'm just gonna say the spiel that I typically give my guys before the vasectomy because I think that um, urologists um, have a ton of patience, not always a ton of time. And then hopefully that'll uh, tell you at least where we come from when we counsel patients about a vasectomy. So usually I tell them the following, and this is just from memory. So I usually say I make one small incision in the scrotum. I find the vas deferens. I grab it, cut it, burn it, clamp it, tie it off, bury it in two different layers okay i can usually do this with one small incision and negotiate both fast deferens through that small incision they're not sterile immediately they need to get a semen analysis two months after the vasectomy and use contraception in the meantime and we go over that at the time of the vasectomy i detail them certain risks of the procedure bleeding so they can get a blood collection in the scrotum we call that a hematoma which is very uncommon i see that just a few times, maybe a couple times a year. Um, an infection, which is pretty darn uncommon. Oftentimes we'll put them on antibiotics afterwards. They can have pain on one or both sides that can be long-term. And that's because there's nerves that run on either side of the, of the vas deferens. That's pretty uncommon. I usually say you know, less than 2% chance of that happening. There's always a chance of failure of vasectomy, right? So. Um, I would say one in 2,000 to one in 10,000 roughly chance of, of that happening. Uh, we usually send a piece of the vas deferens to a doctor called a pathologist. They'll look at it under the microscope, make sure it is the vas deferens. Uh, and again, we encourage patients, we not encourage, we tell them they have to take, they have to use contraception until we get a negative semen analysis after the vasectomy. Always a chance of damage to any general structure in the area. Testicles, spermatic cord, very, very uncommon. But we tell you about that. There's always a chance of need for additional procedures. Okay, so on very rare occasions, uh, there'll be a blood collection in the scrotum called a hematoma that usually over time will just reabsorb into the body or get broken down by the body. But that pressure on the scrotum can be very uncomfortable. And some guys just can't kind of, kind of tolerate it until... Uh, the body reabsorbed it. So sometimes we have to actually pull out that clot. That is very uncommon, but uh, that is something that we will tell people is a possibility. There's always a chance that the incision opens up when we have to revise it. Also extremely uncommon. Um, and then, you know, as far as guys will wonder, when am I going to be sterile after this? We usually say the rule of two slash 20. So two months and 20 ejaculations. So that's in general the um, spiel that we give guys. I also tell guys you should consider this to be a permanently sterilizing procedure. Um, I'll occasionally have guys come in and say, Doc, if I want to have kids again, you can put me back together. Doesn't always work like that. Sometimes we can't. Sometimes we can't. So you should, you should think about this as end of the line. No more kids. You shouldn't think about it any other way because it can be hard to kind of quit, put you back together. And that's a much lengthier procedure per se. Um, so those are the details of the vasectomy that us as urologists tell the patient. Hopefully that described it to you in a slower fashion so you can kind of understand what they might have said uh, more quickly in the office. Uh, and the pearl of wisdom, which I tell all my guys, buy a jock strap, buy a jock strap, bring that with you on the day of vasectomy, wear it out because it protects against any swelling, bleeding afterwards. It enhances your recovery. If we can get that swelling down quicker, you're going to feel better in the weeks after a vasectomy. So buy a jock strap. Um, they even have some, I think, on uh, on Amazon and other places that 
have ice packs built into them specifically for vasectomy, which is really cool. They didn't have that when I was <clears throat> starting practice a number of years ago. Uh, that's it. Hopefully that's helpful to you guys. Hopefully that tells kind of the urology spiel for vasectomy and um, slower terms that you can understand. Thank you so much for listening. We appreciate it. Uh, please subscribe to our channel.